Welcome back, Strat fans. This is Colonel Strat, the strategy extraordinaire here, and today I'm going to be de delving into one of my favorite, all-time favorite races in Warhammer and Total War Warhammer, uh, the Dwarves. Oh, my, my glorious Chaz, the Dwarves. So, um, and make sure you check out and stay to the, to the end of this video, Strat fans, because at the end I'll show you some ideal strats, ideal um, army compositions, and the best way to really destroy as the Dwarves as well as a good a good place to go if you're into epic montage 360 no scope gaming content so stick around to the end strap fans and i'll show you all these juicy juicy bits of information what <laughs> what do you what what all is there to say about my stunted um my stunty brethren over here well a lot actually even though they are they do seem like they share a lot with other order factions they do have some unique traits that make them stand out and we'll get, dive into that. Today, we're going to be exploring Thorgrim Grungebearer, one of the, uh, the, the uh, original dwar dwarf lords, bringer of destruction and doom, the, uh, <coughs> the bearer of, of, um, the bearer of the Damas Kron, the great book of dredges, that book he's writing in right there, and, um, the Axe of Grimnir. So, um, he starts pretty, with a pretty sizable army with hammerers, Hammerers, some long beards, a gyro bomber, and he starts in the Karas at Karak, one of the great cities of cities of the Dwarven Empire. So, without further ado, we're gonna go in and see how the dwarves play as a faction in a race. March on, brave Dowie! March on! March on! Alright, and with that, thank you Thorgrim. We're going to get into the basics of how to play the dwarves. So, um, the, as you can see for this little text box, not a lot of different mechanics, but they do have some that are very um, powerful and some that are uh, kind of aggravating, but um, most of them are pretty powerful. So, to um, get into brass tacks. So, what are these two symbols here? I might hear you ask. Hear you ask. Um, well, first off, the Great Book of Dredges, the Damas Kron, records. Um, well, every dwarf lord now will start with um, a bunch of grudges already, and um, you get more of them by wrongs against the dwarves. The dwarves hold grudges. They have a long memory and they really hate folks that piss them off. So it is <laughs> very, um, very much uh, sought after that you don't piss off any dwarves. So um, Thorgrim starts off with uh, a grudge against the Crooked Moon, capturing Black Crag, Clan Moors, and Karagas Gal. 
capturing that. And each one has a severity. So the severity is measured up here in the, in the meter. So if the severity is very down, then you get some bonuses, like diplomatic pro relations, research rate, control, and um, you'll have a low chance to get slayers for the regiment renown pool. When it goes up, you have um, um, you, you increase the chance of slayers, and then it start getting some debuffs, as well as a buff to charge bonus. But you don't want to be up here because of the diplomatic relations and the research rate, but um, it's more the control, really, because dwarves have a hard time with their settlements, and they have a hard time growing because they're very slow at growth, but their units are really, really busted at the beginning. So they can carve out a pretty big empire, but I usually don't do that as the dwarves because um, you'll find that it's hard to maintain that empire later on because of the control issues if you don't if you ignore your grudges. So thankfully, we don't start off too irked. The long beards aren't too irked, but this does increase over time. The more you see that age modifier, if there's m if there's more years or more turns that it remains active the more the severity ticks up, and then it could go into here, where they're just outright enraged. Alright, now the next um, item is the forge. This is really unique, and I really like this about the dwarves, is they actually have a purpose for, um, but besides trading for all the different trade resources. So, um, yeah, you can make the normal, you know, arm, weapons, armor, you know, all the items for your lords to kit them out with... Um, different weapons and you can spam them out with a special resource called oath gold now you get how do you gain oath gold well you gain it through battles characters so some characters like some heroes um, they generate oath gold passively characters sometimes do it as well like I believe Thorgrim and all lords do have a blue skill line that gives them some I think so or maybe it's one of their uh, top skill lines. Now, I don't believe he has it. But um, I think the Rune Lords have it. Yeah, the Rune Lords and the Rune Smiths have it. And then you can recycle items. So let's say you just you fight this army right here. And you and you get like a... Let's, let's just demonstrate that real quick, Strat fans. So if we fight this army real quick, because it's a decisive, we're fighting a very small greenskin force. If we get um, an item from that, like the Sword of, of Strife here, we got a, a blue item. So if we pull an item from that, and then we can also, there's an option to, to get old gold through this too. I usually do that, get a little bit. Um, if you get an item, you can go into here, and you can go into Recycle. Um, I think... Thorgrim equipped it, so that's why, but if we unequipped it, and then we go into our forge and go to recycle, we can recycle it to get more old gold. I usually do that, um, not until, well, you, you'll be spamming this in the late, late game. You can also get banners to put on your units, character runes to put, because each dwarf has runes that they can put on themselves too, like... Um, they have their basic equipment, and then they have rune slots, so they can put powerful runes in here to give boons. So the dwarves really can kit themselves out and their lords really well, and that's what I, one thing I like about them. On top of that, I mentioned before they use resources for this, so some of the more advanced ones, like the greens, blues, and even these purples here, like Starbreaker and Elfbane, they can only be made once, hence they don't have this, um, mult this, this icon here. But, um, they're really powerful. This one gets discouraged and has a lot of melee attack. This is melee attack against elves and spell resistance. Um, but you do need access to some resources. And some of them get really big with their, with their resource requisition. Like, what the resources you need. Like this one here. Like, you need three resources. And then, I think for one of the talent... No, I think it's just up to three resources. But the Ring of Grimnir is a pretty good one. And uh, the Horn of Ancestors summons an ancestral spirit. So they can get really, really overpowered if you can invest your time into maintaining, grabbing those settlements that have 
Like this one here has wood, so you'll get timber. This one here has furs, you'll get furs. And that'll just add it to the pool, and then they'll count towards here. And then you can start chewing those out. Um, and then their tech tree is pretty basic. They have this one up here is pretty much for their settlements and their their growth and buildings because they they don't get a lot of growth um, or income starting out. But once they get this, they have this whole line that just buffs up their income production. And then this is for their their units. So two basic trees, nothing fancy, pretty basic. And then, um, you know, they're an order faction. So they start with, uh, you know, good diplomatic relations with their own race. Um, with the Empire, they have good di Empire. diplomatic relations. And Thorgrim himself has a non-aggression pact. And then the f one final thing is their buildings. Their building tree is pretty is pretty basic as well. You know, they have their, you know, their um, their main infantry building with a with a Thane hero. Then they have their advanced forge with their advanced infantry, and you know their engineer shop. The dwarves don't have um, cav, but they do have these um, these war machines. These flying war machines which are really good, but they're kind of like chariots where you have to micromanage them, or else they'll get caught up in because they can get taken down by missile fire pretty pretty hard. All right, and now that the campaign mechanics have been have been have been uh, talked about. Let's move on now to um, to some army types, and we'll start off with a tier one army. Yeah, now we're going to be um, examining this first tier army. So um, the dwarves, when they first start off, they have a lot of different units to choose from, but I only I really only use these three beginning because um, you're not going to get a lot of uh, you know time to really build them up, you know, and like even grudge throwers are tier two technically, even though they're you know the cannons are better, and I count them as a tier as a tier two. I count these ones more as, as a tier one because even though they are good, dwarves tier one units are still really good. Um, the dwarves play a very defensive playstyle, um, like I did in my so you want to play Warhammer game uh, um, vi video. Um, you usually want to try to form or take some high ground. Now, I picked a battle zone that's very laid out, so you can get like a with some hilly spots, you know, kind of dotted all over the map. So, I usually take my dwarf warriors, my main line, and I'll uh, I'll set up, I'll I'll scout the terrain to make sure that it's you know high enough. But if you have quarrelers like this army, you don't have to worry about this. Because any any unit that is a, um, a crossbow or a bow or something like that will shoot right over the unit. So you don't have to worry about that. But it's more for the artillery. So I usually set up intricate defense plays because the dwarves are not a very attack-heavy faction. They're more of a let's sit here and let you come to me type of faction. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to do a basic strat where we, um, I'm going to make sure I have, for like for advancing, um, the dwarves have to make sure they cover their sides. They're very, very slow. Um, not as slow as Nurgle units, but they are slow. So we have these grudge throwers here, a very good high ranged um, artillery unit. That does a lot of armor piercing damage. And then we have quarrelers for our back line. Very good. Um, they're actually decent in melee combat too, because they have a shield, 80 armor, and they have a decent melee stat. Um, but they are really good in, in ranged, and that's what they're gonna be pe best at. And then we have our dwarf warriors. A very good melee defense, and can hold really well, as well as shielded in 85 armor. And then I have Thorgrim here. 125 armor he starts with, with a lot of um, melee attack and damage. And then I have a runesmith. I usually try to usually start with a runesmith or an engineer, depending on where what lord you pick. But I usually think a runesmith's better because eventually they'll get spells that can really help. Well, I call them spells with the cold runes. So these runes are single cast, 
and then you have to wait for them all to charge up. So you can cast multiple runes in a battle. It's just there's no they they kind of harness the winds of magic instead of using magic and spells with it. They bind them into a physical rune that they cast. So it's a little different. All right. So with that, we um, we have this setup, and we're going to face a general generalized Urk army that we usually have, and I think they have more guys than us. Yes, they do, but their units are lower tier. So let's start the battle. And like I said, I usually let them come to us. I'm going to shorten our uh, our missile line so that we can uh, have these guys defend the sides. Yeah. Now they might still go around us. Um, the the orcs are a very attack heavy faction, so they're going to attack first. But you know the dwarves have to are really defense heavy, so they have to make sure you're set up right, and that you can get as much of your missile fire off as possible. You'll do the most damage. Your units are meant to really hold. They're really good at holding stuff. They're not so good at just dealing out damage, like the orcs units are. The orcs are really good at rushing and and, and power 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 rushing to do a lot of damage. Um. All right. Let's see. If we can overcast this. I'm going to overcast it on this one. Give them some damage resistance, and it'll affect the allies in range too. So, you know, if you hold, see, I, I held, I held these, uh, these guys back, even though I didn't, I didn't prevent these guys from getting through. Um, and then you focus on their, mi on their missile line with your coilers and your, uh, grudge throwers so that you can deal with their backline. And if their back line's down, that means they don't have any any big damage damaging stuff. The door the orcs still rely heavily on 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 a back on a back line too early game. Um, later game they don't rely as heavily, but you see how our quarrelers were actually able to hold their own. That's one good thing about the dwarves is they their units can hold their own, but they're not they're meant to hold. They're not meant to actually deal the damage. So we're holding them here. We really are. We're holding them here, but our backline needs to do that damage, or else, you know, we're not going to really do much. We do have units that can do really good in melee combat, like hammerers or even iron breakers, <laughs> but um, the dwarves' highlight is their defensive in infantry and their high-powered artillery. See how the artillery was able to just like destroy that back line, and our quarrelers destroyed that back line, and now we can focus on the main line. And our our main line's taken a little bit of a beating, but they're not they're not done done yet. And then the rune pr runesmith can go in too because he got a lot of armor. And the dwarves, the, their their signature, their secret is their armor because they, like, if you compare them, look at these orc boys. Their armor is way lower than these dwarf warriors, so they're able to the wolf warriors are able to completely crump them because they just they have so much more armor. So if you can get a full army of these guys, the only difference is the only downside is that the dwarves just. You know, in a campaign, it's gonna you're gonna struggle to really get units, and you're gonna struggle to replenish too, because the orc, the dwarves don't have a lot of replenishment. So while these simulations will show you these these army setups are are really ideal and will do really well, they're not gonna really reflect how you are in a campaign, because you're kind of you're gonna try to be just getting as many units as you need to. But 
just the, by the fact that all I needed to defeat this orc army, which was actually pretty decent, um, was like basic units. Shows you how strong the, the dwarves starting units are. Okay, and so with that, let's go into a tier 2. Alright, now on to tier 2. So, for tier 2, I uh, decided to pick a, um, a more defensive location to show off their more defensive attributes. Now, um, you see we have upgraded a little bit. We've gotten some cannons, which ups their missile strength and um, gives them more range and ammunition. We got thunderers, which are really good at, at piercing through armor, um, even though they don't have as much missile strength. In fact, I actually think they do have higher base missile strength than the than the quarrelers, um, but they have a lot more range as well. And then for our mainline infantry, we've upgraded to longbeards, which have a hundred armor, their shield, and buffed melee stats, as well as immune to psychology, which means they don't get feared or terrored. And then they have Encourage, which means they encourage all those around them, which means... And they have also have Charge Defense against Large, so, but their Encourage buffs everyone's leadership. Alright, so we've also added a Master Engineer. Now these heroes, I usually go for both of these heroes. Um, the Thanes are good, but they're, they're more of just like a, you know, kind of like an action hero. They just go in and, you know, you know, fuck shit up, but they don't really do much to help the units. Whereas the Runesmith where he's gotten three more runes, his explosive rune, Rune of Wrath and Ruin, the Rune of Slowness, which helps slow down enemy um, fast units, such as Cav, and the Rune of Oath and Snail, which buffs up their armor. The Master Engineer, while he does have a pretty good missile strength and weapon strength himself because of his, his things, his abilities are what makes him such an asset to have. And, and also... That glorious beard right there. That, that's that's quite an asset right there. Oh, they all have glorious beards. E even even though the you know the rune priest does. But no beard is bigger than Thorgrim's. Anywho, I'm getting off talk topic. So what he has, what he has, is his his abilities. So his abil, come on, his abilities. Extra powder, which is an augment which buffs up the armor-piercing damage and base damage for all missile units around him. So that's already awesome, but he also has this cool ability here, restock. He can replenish ammunition. So all of these high-damaging missile units can be replenished. Their ammunition can be replenished. All right, so I gave us a, a more tougher orc army to fight because this is going to be more defensive. Um, so we're going to... You know, get ourselves set up over here to be more de defensive. We are going to have to rush to uh, get ourselves into the proper position. But we should be able to get there in time. Now, I don't like to do this in uh, in actual battles, because I like the realism, but um, for the dwarves and for setting this up particularly, I am going to pause it once we start, so I can set up all of our position up here, our defensive position. I don't like doing this in, in the main play, but for this I will. And now, a slope is always ideal, because if you can get onto a slope then you can do a lot of damage. And you can actually get these guys to fire over your units if you're on a slope. Then we're going to have Thorgrim right there. Well, actually we'll have him in the front. Master Engineer back here. So he can provide all that to them. And then these guys up here... And then we take each one of these guys and just start lining them up. Because we want to... Again, the dwarves' main strategy is defense. So what are we going to do? We're going to defend. 
Now take some time to line up and get everyone in the right line, but once you do, I guarantee you will uh, you will think you're, you're lucky stars you did. We may have to shorten our uh, our thing. Yeah, we may have to because I don't think we can. All right, let's shorten it. All right, so then we do this. And also, if you're wondering why, how I'm getting these to highlight up here, Strand fans, you just hold down the space bar. All right, let's set these up. All right, and that should be all of it covered. And then we're going to unpause and they're all going to go to their desired spots I just hope we can get there in time before the enemy um, charges us they, they might just wait for us so we're gonna speed fast forward yeah they're gonna they're gonna charge in they're gonna try to take advantage of us not set up All right. So now that we got our setup here, in fact, we're going to have our and they're trying to get around the sides. They're trying to get around our sides. See, we're able to fire over into the enemy because they have big, big monsters as well. So we're able to fire over through our units. And just the fact that our thunder, that our, uh, that our long beards are able to hold is just insane too. All right. And then we just we just pick our targets and pick them out. I usually have them pick their own targets. Yeah, look at that. Already doing so much damage to them. And then I like to do a Rune of Wrath and Ruin once they get into melee combat, because that does a lot. Now, it did overcast damage a little bit, but it did do a lot of damage to them. And uh, we're all we're all fighting. So we have to... You see that timer right there? That's until we're able to actually do another rune. And then the rune itself also has a timer, too. So he's got... He's got all these buffs, so I'm going to activate some buffs, too. And a debuff too on him. Move to attack. Hook those dwarf legs. So the bonus to this is that you're able to cover a long way and the enemy has to spread out. The downside is if they choose to blob up, one unit's gonna take the brunt of the of the damage. But the good thing is the long beards they can do it. They can take it and they can take a hit because their leadership is rock solid. 85 leadership is insane. Insane for a tier 2 unit. And Longbeards have it. Alright, let's refill some of our... Yep, I'm going to refill these guys. There we go. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing real good. I'm going to do a buffing spell on this area as well once I get uh, buffing rune. Alright, let's do that. 
buff them up. And every time you overcast it, it does cause some damage to the rune, to the runesmith. So you'd want to make sure that it doesn't do too much damage. But the rune is worth it because they have 160 armor now, and they're able to really hold. So again, now you see why a runesmith is so sought after for an army. Yeah, we're we're de we're decimating them. We are. They they cannot get through this. Usually, hammer and anvil works, but dwarves, it, it's another story. And now we have a showdown with um, Thorgrim and this guy. And we're going to reduce these trolls so that they can get chopped down. And they still have 47 entities. So they're doing really well. Let's get these guys. We're gonna win. We're gonna win. We've got this this flank over here can support because they're pretty much secured. Alright, and there's the army losses. We've successfully held. Yep. We've successfully held them back, strat fans. See this is why a defensive strat for the dwarves is almost guaranteed to win. Because especially if you pick the right terrain like I did, you're, you're just going to be able to decimate because then your missile units can actually fire. They can fire over your units into the gully, into the enemy. Because the enemy has the high ground. They think they, you know, they're going down the slope. They think they're going to win. But really, they're going into a kill zone. <laughs> and we did lose a few dwarves holding the line there, but we held it. And we held it real well. And our most damaged unit only went down to 77 morale. So he's, they hold, they hold really well. All right, and with that, let's go on to tier three. All right, Strat fans, and for tier three, we're going underground, underground to the halls of Karagazul. Ah, oh, it's looking beautiful. Beautiful. I, I, I just always can't admire this game enough and how all the, the battles and, and all that look, look awesome. So... For our tier 3 army, we've kind of mixed it up a little bit. Um, we've gotten some additional melee units with the additional um, hammerers. And we've also got some um, regiments of renown to spice it up as well. Um, so for the back line, I've upgraded to organ guns and flame cannons. So these flame cannons here, they don't have a lot of armor pissing. But they have insane missile damage. And they also have burnt, which does a, you know, a debuff. So they're really insane. These organ guns, however, they provide the armor-piercing damage. So, um, I usually do a, two of those. And then, of course, the Thunderers I keep. Um, the Thunderers can be counted as a Tier 3 once they get above XP level um, 9 or 7. Because then they get enough missile strength to make themselves count as it. Um, and then um, for our main line, we've really stepped up and gotten uh, Iron Breakers. Now these Iron Breakers have 125 armor. So you know what that means? That means that they have 125% chance to negate all armor. I mean, all, all non-armor piercing damage. So they're really good. And then um, we do have this Regiment of Renown, the Norglimdings Iron Breakers which I believe it gives them Vanguard deployment. Yeah, that's what it gives them. Um, and then we have Hammerers, which are really, really armor, he heavily armor-piercing infantry as they also have magic attacks, which means they negate any physical resisting units. So I usually keep a couple of them just in case the enemy has some cheeky missile, missile uh, or um, physical resistant units. Um, this one here, the Peak Gate Guard, have Sundering Attacks, which reduces the target's armor. So they're really good at mowing them down. So for the Rune Smith, he's now got his last two runes, the Rune of Speed and the Rune of Breaking, which um, imbues him with Sundered, with the enemy with Sundered Armor. Um, yeah, so Sundered, it gives you Sundering Attacks. He also has his Forge Fire, which all enemies around him reduce their, reduces their armor. 
and he has his master rune as well, and uh, his hammer of Karak Draza, which you know some of them will get will get this. And then Thorgrim Grungebera has his uh, his High King passive, as well as he has um, the Great Book of Grudges, which gives him more melee attack. And then we've updated him to have his Fire Ring of Thori, which is I think it's just a random thing that you can get, but it's one of the random items. And then his abilities are Ballistics Calibration, which increases reload skill and accuracy. Entrenchment, which increases their physical resistance and armor-piercing missile damage. And then a Flash Bomb, which reduces their, their melee defense and their speed, as well as his recharges. So, again, we're defending, so we're going to straddle these. Put one organ gun up here, one flame cannon up here, organ gun here, flame cannon here, and then um, we're going to put the thunderers underneath them in a line right underneath, right over here. We're going to move them a little bit closer. All right, and then and the, on the ground gonna put our iron breakers now the iron breakers have a special um, weapon as well they actually start they actually have a, an explosive they can throw at the enemy to uh, to do mo some extra damage some cheeky extra damage and then we're going to keep the, uh, the peak gate guard kind of on the sides here and then the uh, hammerers of course on behind the uh, well again on the sides, kind of in reserve. So like if the if it gets too hairy for our iron breakers here, then we send those in. But the peak gate guard is actually going to just in case the enemies because I did give them some uh, some boar units, some boar bo boar boy biggins, which are uh, I think it's a tier two still, but they act like a tier three. Um, and then we'll put the uh, the runesmith and Thorgrim in the front with them. So you see the uh, the angle right here. So that's a good angle. So with that, I think we have all our, all our defenses set up. And um, let's begin. Oh wait, let's get him. Make sure he's he's here with them, so he can reinforce them and give them more ammunition. All right, let's begin. All right. So the enemy's going to charge charge us. They also have a giant and a Ragnarok spider, so they are pretty scary. But again, um, we can outdo them. Even though they have black orcs, which black orcs have a lot of leadership and armor, we have armor piercing stuff. So um, most of their stuff doesn't have that high of an armor value. So, yeah. And even though the flame cannons don't have a high armor piercing damage, that doesn't mean they don't do it. They still do have a pretty high one, it's just not as high as their flame damage. But the flame the flaming effect they, they do, they cast, is equally as as destructive as anything else. So when they get into range we'll be able to start firing at them. And of course we do have the special ranged weapon which does a good amount of a good chunk of damage but it doesn't do any armor piercing it just does explosive because it's like a little satchel charge they throw all right so once they get into range we'll be able to really destroy them all right and then we'll cast it I'm not going to overcast it because I believe it does damage him all right, so they're kind of snoozing right now because we're just waiting. We got ourselves all prepped up. Again, dwarves are all about just waiting. All right, they they just waited right outside of our missile range because they know it. They're within range. Oh, yep, they are because we just we just hit them with the organ guns, and that did a whole chunk of damage. Look at that. Ooh, a huge chunk of damage. Yeah, they're the they're sending in their cab to try to uh, spot a weakness. The thing is, we don't have a weakness. 
And that's going to be their downfall for sending in their weak units, because these are, are the weak units. But the AI is smart. They're not they're not dumb. They're gonna try to to outmaneuver you. But um, once they realize they can't do that for the dwarves, then they're just gonna try to smash through one one part of the line. But, you know, by that time they've already lost because they're gonna lose these units and I mean, yeah, we'll we'll use our explosive on them, but I mean Iron Breakers aren't really known. And also, they just fly, flee off the map, and that wastes a unit. Alright, so... AI is not perfect in these games, but... Oh, jeez. Um, okay, come on. Don't fire my own units. That's one, one thing that I don't like about the flame cannons, is sometimes they do hit my own units. Yeah, Organ Gun's already doing some damage to the Black Orcs. And the flame cannons, they do a lot more damage against, like, infantry units. Um, and look, like, we're, we're hitting the, this Arachnorok already really fast. Yep. <laughs> don't, don't fire at that, no. Don't fire at that. Fire at those guys. There you go. Alright, and we're doing armor-piercing damage, so we're going to be able to do a lot more damage to them than they will to us. And then I'm going to cast a uh, rune to do some more damage once these black warts get into view. Alright, let's do that rune. Do that debuff spell. And we'll send in those guys. Let's send these hammerers in over here. Let's get them over here so they can come in and support the middle. Oh, never mind. Actually, oh no, wait. No, they can't go that f that way. So, okay. We gotta get them to support the main line. These hammerers are gonna go in. Peak gate guard. All right, and then we'll do um, this for these guys, and then of course replenish the uh, and increase our accuracy for all of them. So yeah, we've already decimated their armies, and you see how quick that did, that was. Did not take long at all. So. But they're kind of just forcing through. They're trying to force through this area here. So we need to go in with our hammerers and do some more damage to them. Alright, so that whole section is kind of gone. And it's just, a te again, a testament to how insane the, this strat can be with these units. Um, because we've we destroyed their commander. And now we can actually chase down the units and get a lot of these heavy units destroyed. Like I'm sure if I wanted to, I could I could nuke these. Yep, there goes the giant down. Ragnarok might might escape. Yeah, he's probably going to escape, but we did a lot of damage to him. And you can really just completely erase an army by this. And not to mention the flame cannons are just awesome to see. <laughs> I, I, this is why I love it so much, because I love to see all the dwarves, like, you know, all their missile units just destroy enemy units. Like those black orcs there, they're, they're dead. They're not coming back. They don't have enough sp speed to escape all of our, all of our units, all of our uh, missile fire. Alright, so with that, Strat fans, that'll conclude a Tier 3 army. Alright, and with that, Strat fans, that concludes my Dwarf um, Guide. So, for um, 
for any of you that might be an interest, but um, that might be a pro gamer, um, I do have a friend of mine that is recently getting really in, in and stoked into Warhammer. So I'm going to shout him out here. His name is Life as Support, and you should go check him out. He's a real MLG No Scope 360 YouTuber that does really good highlight reels and. In the future, we're going to do a lot of co-op campaigns together. So go check him out, Strat fans. Sub to him. You know, give him some of our support. So, and with that, Strat fans, this will be it for my dwarf guide. Um, come catch me next week. I'm going to be breaking down the green skins. And with that, Strat fans, keep it strategic. Colonel out.